الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا ابن القيم رحمه الله in this hikmah he says من أقوال شفيق البلخي شفيق ابن إبراهيم البلخي أحد الزهاد وأحد العلماء so he is quoting some of his saying and that's what we go over tonight إن شاء الله يقول ابن القيم رحمه الله قال شفيق ابن إبراهيم أغلق باب التوفيق عن الخلق من ستة أشياء the doors of success and the doors of التوفيق and the doors of excel were closed because of six things and التوفيق here is mainly the success of al akhir but by no means it should be understood that there is no concern for the success of the dunya but there is no such thing as success in the dunya and failure in the akhir it's indeed failure in the dunya and the akhir and there is success in the akhir without success according to the people's measures in the dunya he might look poor or he might be poor he might be weak but what he is doing he is successful in the sight of Allah فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَى صُوَرِكُمْ صوركم و ها اعمال اموال نعم ان الله لا ينظر الى صوركم واجسامكم ولكن ينظر الى اعمالكم ها وين Allah does not look at your looks and your bodies but he looks to your hearts and your actions so he might look to the people poor and he might look scrawny weak and he might not even be dressed properly because he's very poor Imam Dunnuhu al-Bukhari when one time or for a few days they missed him in the halaqat al-ilm he was student still they went to check on him so they found him without clothes in his home he can't leave he didn't have any clothes to wear I think someone asked him for salapa and he gave him the only garment he had but that is Bukhari you look at Bukhari poor like that Bukhari, I think, inherited a hundred thousand dinar. Hundred thousand dinar. That is wealth today. Dinar, each dinar ten dirham. يعني one million dirham. A thousand thousand dirham. ألف ألف dirham. Wealth. He spent it all in seeking knowledge. His father, when he was dying, he said, I left a hundred thousand dinar. And I have no doubt that one dinar of it is haram. So he gave Bukhari. 
produced Bukhari. So Allah does not look. So the person might look to the people from the outside as a failure. But in the sight of Allah, he's successful. Yani Umar bin Khattab bin Hudayfa came to him after one of the battles. Yeah, Umar asked him, who died? Who's shaheed, inshallah? He said, so and so. Fulan ibn Fulan, Fulan ibn Fulan, so and so and so and so. And many, many, we don't even know their names. Baka Umar. Baqal. But Allah knows. Allah knows. So, Shafiq ibn Ibrahim al-Balkhi, rahimahullah, says that the doors for success with Allah were closed because of six behaviors, six actions. Pay attention to those and see where you fit. One or two, three or four, maybe all of them, and intend to change if you want success. Yani, one ayah in the book of Allah gives you the summary of tawfiq. One ayah in the book of Allah gives you the idea and the ideal tawfiq and success. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِي إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ My success is only by Allah. And my success is only from Allah. And my success is only through Allah. That's it. That's it. Trying to please East and West, and you think you're the best, you're not. Turn right and left, north and south, and you never turn up. That's lost endeavor. They had actions, but الأخسرين. It's not like they did not do anything. They did. That's why Allah said الأخسرين أعمالا. يعني those who did, but they still the loser. So the doors of success closed. Doors of success with Allah closed because of six behaviors. اشتغالهم بالنعمة عن شكرها. Got busy with the blessings rather than gratitude for the blessings. <coughs> Allah gives you, you get so busy with what Allah gives you, and you forget to thank Him. Yani Allah says in His Zumar, In takfuru, fa inna Allah ghaniyun anku, wa la yarda li ibadihi al-kufr. This is يعني, mainly the kufr, kufr al-ni'ma. And one of the ways to kufr or to disbelieve in the blessings of Allah, to reject it, is يعني, kufr can mean rejection. To reject the ni'ma of Allah is not, by, is not showing gratitude. And the person who is not showing gratitude is called kafir. Even if he's Muslim, he who does not show gratitude to Allah for the blessings is considered يعني, that is act of kufr. Like linguistically, it's kufr. Yakfur in ni'ma yani yajhadwa. And he does not show gratitude. Wa in tashkuru. And if you show gratitude, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yardahu lakum. He accept that for you. Wa la taziru wa ziratun wa So when people got busy with the blessing, and they neglected the gratitude for such blessings, the doors of success got closed. Even in the dunya. وَلَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُ Allah says, the more you show gratitude, the more I will give you. So you find the person who lacks the understanding of the iman. Allah blesses him with investment. Allah blesses him with a project. He is so excited about it. And then it's a drought after that. Drought. 
He said, man, I made some money and now I spent all of it and nothing happened after that. Because you did not show gratitude. You got busy, happy about what Allah given you. And you forgot to thank Him. So when people are busy with the ni'mah, neglecting that gratitude and thanking Allah for such ni'mah, Allah takes it away from them, such closing the door of success for them. That's why they said, الكافر مع النعمة والمؤمن مع المنعم Kafir usually attached to the blessing. The mu'min attached to the one who gives the blessing. That's why the kafir and the person without iman, when the ni'mah doesn't come, huh, he's angry, upset. Because the ni'mah comes and goes. The ni'mah ups and downs. So if you're happy with up, you're going to be upset with down. If you're happy when it comes, you're upset when, when it goes away, as Allah described them in the Quran. But when you are with Allah, huh? when you are with Allah, does Allah disappear and comes back? Does Allah does not exist and then exist? لا, عياد بالله. كل يوم هو في شأن. Sometimes gives, sometimes takes, but Allah is Allah. Allah is Allah. So when you are attached to the one who gives the blessings, to the provider, that does not change. Does not change. So as such, your feelings do not change. That is where the movement is attached, attached to. والغافل عن النعم أو عن المنعم كذاب. And he who gets the blessings, receives the blessings from Allah and does not thank like an animal. Dab. And even in Dawam, thank Allah. You invite someone to your house. You send your son, picks him up, huh? drives him to your house. You have made the best of the foods, the best of the drinks, the, the fruits, the vegetables, the meat, the chicken, the fish, this and that. Every kind of food. He walks in. No salam, no kalam. All he's looking at the food. He eats, eats, eats until he's about to explode. Picks himself up and leaves. That I want an animal. That's what Allah has to do with Allah. gives you and provides for you and keeps you keeps you alive and this and that. And you you forget to say thank you. Aren't you like this example or not? Aren't you? Allah, he would ask. So you should be attached to the mun'im, to the one who provides, not to the... وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings you have, it's from Allah. So once you understand this fact, then you feel obligated to thank him. Huh? You thank. Even you thank for nothing. You thank for nothing. Because there is no such thing as nothing in your life when you remember the blessings of Allah. You're always going to have some. Yeah, and you went back to, to Muhammad ibn Sirin, rahimahullah. He said so and so got too much money. And he's away from Allah. And I pray and I do this and I do my best to please Allah. And I'm poor. I got nothing. So Ibn Sirin looked at him and he said, Can you sell me or would you sell me your arm for a thousand dirham? He said, No. He said, What about the left arm? He said, No. He said, The right leg? No. The left leg? And he went on part after part after part. So he told him, You have investment of thousands of thousands of dirham and you say you're poor? You got nothing? You understand? His point, his point is you never have nothing. But when you compare yourself to other people, then you're going to feel that way. And we are guided by the Prophet ﷺ. When you want to compare yourself to other people, compare yourself to other people in your dearness and closeness to Allah. Not in how much they have and how much you don't. 
Because you're always going to have people who have more than you. And you're always going to be sorry for yourself. Never happy and never content and never satisfied. But when you look at those who pray more than you, those who please Allah more than you, those who you think closer to Allah, that's where you need to feel sorry. Because they have so way advanced ahead of you to Allah in their journey to Allah. That's what you should, should make you upset. As one of them said, he said, if you see someone, if you die, huh, you die, because you see someone who has more ibadah than you, that is not a big of a deal. Yani, to die, it's not something as a surprise. It's not a surprise when you see someone who has more ibadah. Yani, it's worth it. It's worth to die out of stress when you see someone who has more ibadah than you. But we don't do that. We die for other stuff. Some of us die a hundred thousand times a day. When he compares himself to this and to that. And look what he's wearing. And look at his watch. And look at his shoes. And look at his shirt. And look at his tie. And look at his car. And look at his house. And look at his business. And look at this. And look at that. But how many people say, man, look at that, brother. MashaAllah, yani. he, he has the Quran memorized. I wish if I can do that. Why you wish? You can do it. But you don't even think about it. We don't think about it. Look at knowledge. He was ignorant. You came from the bellies of your mother, know nothing. The way he learned, you can learn. But we don't see like that. When we meet each other, when we, when we meet each other how's your family? How's your business? How's work? How is school? But how many of us ask each other, how is your Iman? How is your heart? Where is your heart? We don't, because we lack touch of reality. Success. Because our success is different than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So, the more, the level of you showing gratitude to Allah is the level you raise your status with Allah. Okay? The more you show gratitude is the more you raise your status with Allah. And shukr can involve three mahawr or three muqawwima. Three things that you can do to show Allah gratitude. And they are three different levels. One of them is l'ilm. L'ilm يعني to admit that this ni'mah from Allah. That is a way to show Allah gratitude. Is to say, Ya Allah, يعني Allah give you a hundred dollars, you say, Oh Allah, this is from you. This is from you. So the admission that the ni'mah you have is from Allah is shukr, is gratitude. When you admit that it's from Allah, not because of your experience, not because of your planning, not because of your intelligence, not because of your effort, you admit that it's from Allah, you're showing Allah gratitude. Okay? You're confessing this is from you. That means you are thanking Allah for his, for his ni'mah. And also, hal, huh? your whole attitude about the ni'mah, huh? about your heart, how you feel about it. So when you feel it, you thank him. Ya Rabbi lak alhamdu hamdan tayyiban mubarakan kama yanbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azim sultan. So when it's existing, you, when your attitude is that you know the blessings you have from Allah, you tend to thank Him. You're more prone to thank. You see, when someone does you a favor, this dunya, and you, let's say he did you a favor, and then you meet him for the first time since you, he did you the favor. Don't you, the first thing you tell him, Jazakallah khair, I really appreciate what you did for me, this and that, I don't know how to pay you back, I don't know how to... And maybe the favor he did you is so yani tiny. Okay? But because it's present on your heart that he did you a favor. That is a way of gratitude. And the third level of the gratitude or muqawwimat al-shukr is al-amal. Al-amal. Allah blessed you. You go and you start. Huh? Using that blessing, Allah blessed you with ilm, you go, you teach people. Allah blessed you with money, you help people. Allah blessed you with strength, you support people. This and that, that is al-amal. And that is the highest level of gratitude. 
So you're not miser, cheap, stingy. Allah bless you with money, you just keep it. Get my pocket bigger and bigger and bigger. That is not a way to show gratitude. Okay? So these are things about the first point. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'malu ala Dawuda shukra. I'malu ala Dawud shukra. Allah tells Al Dawud, Yani Dawud, Sulaiman, their offspring, I'malu ala Dawud shukra. Yani Al Dawud, family of Dawud, do an act to show gratitude. So action is a way to show to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the the first. The first reason the doors of success are closed. Busy with the blessings rather than gratitude, showing gratitude. And their concern or their desiring knowledge. But they lack action. He's learning, but he's not acting according to it. And that is very dangerous. He, want, he, he's, he desires to learn. He sets to memorize. He sets to read the books of Islam. He sets to listen to the lectures. He sets to learn from the, the people of Islam. It's absolute desire and shahwa of knowing. Not to save himself from what's coming. That closes the door of success. Closes the door of success. As the Prophet said, he said, he who learns to argue with the ignorant huh, and to show off and to do this, straight to hellfire. The one of the first to be thrown in the hellfire. Huh? أول من تسعر به النار عالم قارئ القرآن. First people to be thrown in the hellfire, one of them, عالم, knowledgeable person, knowledgeable of the Quran. Did not do it for the right reason and did not act according to it. <coughs> and that's why today, العلم became business. Became kind of business. I met some of the brothers yeah, uh, when I went in Hajj. They're studying in, in some of the universities in the kingdom there. And when you talk to them, yeah, and you cry. Yeah, yeah, I was miserable when I heard what they had to say. When you ask them why they're there. Sad. Some of them there. So they can get a job when they come back to their country. He's studying, so he can be imam. Huh? He can be a president for a school or a teacher in a school. <laughs> you don't need to go there to do that. That is your himma. That is your goal from learning. These people go, these brothers go two years to learn Arabic and then four years to, to do the, the schooling, the sharia. Six years you spend from your life so you can get back, be imam and, and get salary. That is your goal. From learning the knowledge of Allah. For this, to get paid, this thing comes. You want Allah, the dunya, Allah will send you the dunya, whether the dunya likes it or not. You come after the dunya. You learn قال الله قال رسول to get paid business. Some people learn قال الله قال رسول so he can take people's money. Ah, people see in him, mashallah, knowledgeable person. When he talks hadith, Quran, so he takes it as a vehicle to get to the heart of people. So when he asks them for money, they trust him, and suddenly. He is nowhere to be found. Or suddenly he denies. I know people who go to the masajid five times a day. Five times a day. They borrow money, then they deny it. 
five times a day. Tijab, business. The ilm became for them business. That is a reason for the doors of knowledge, of success to be closed. وَالْمُسَارَعَةُ إِلَى الدَّنْبِ وَتَأْخِيرِ التَّوْبِ Another reason is to rush to commit the sin. <coughs> but you're so slow to repent. We rush to sin, but we're so slow to repent. نُؤَمِّلُ huh? آمَالًا يعني he starts wishing. Ah, oh, wallahi, يعني, Allah, I'm busy. When, when I get 50, 60 years old and I retire, and I start getting my social security, good luck. If you're 10 years away from social, most probably when it's time, you will not get anything. That's what you're depending on, social security. Make for yourself life. And then, then, with the social security, with the $450 a month, he's going to sit in the masjid and never leave. Yeah, and who's going to feed you? The amwal is salaqa and zakah. Some people like that. Rush to sin, but so slow for repentance. Because they think they're going to live. And that is one of the reasons of thinking you're going to live forever. Four, وَالْإِغْتِرَارُ بِصُحْبَةِ الصَّالِحِينَ وَتَرْكُ الْإِقْتِدَاءِ بِفِعَالِهِ Another reason for the doors of success to be closed is he is accompanying and he's hanging out with the righteous people. But he thinks that's enough. He does not imitate them. He does not follow them. Why they're righteous, he does not try to capitalize on that. But, يعني you find people, Allah, I'm the student of so-and-so sheikh. And I'm the student of so-and-so sheikh. And I'm the student of Ibn Uthaymeen. And I'm the student of Abdul Razak Afifi. And I'm the student of Ibn Baz. And Sheikh. And his reputation in the dirt. This is a real example I'm giving. In the dirt. With money. And people like that. So he prides himself of being in partnership or in company of the righteous people, but that's all he takes from them, their names. Tayyib ma Sheikh so and so used to say that, why you do the other way? Sheikh so and so he said, Tarik al-Salaq why you don't pray? But you just pride yourself of being with them? Well, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, huh? Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, was with the Prophet and the Prophet buried him and he wrapped him with his own garment and he put him in the grave and he prayed on him. Nothing. Did not help. Alright? Very important. So you want to be in the company of the righteous people? Take from their ilm, take from their akhlaq, take from their manners, and put it into practice. You don't do that, you're closing the door of success. <coughs> yani, the example, very common example, and I heard it from one uh, imam yani, here, and yani, some stuff, I don't know, they say, and they better off staying quiet about it. But they say it, and you just look at them and say, yeah, what are you talking about? Why, why you should be talking about this stuff? It's really disgraceful to you. He's saying yeah, and he, how many times he goes to, to that in a lecture in one of the masajid. How he's invited to. How many times he goes to, to a wedding. Huh? And he sits there and, uh, and he recites Quran and then he does the Quran or the, the contract. And after all that, if music and dancing and singing and all that starts taking place. Well, like you insulted yourself by going there. You insulted the deen by accepting to go there. And then you come to complain about them. Yeah, and he says that I went to one wedding one time and supposedly to be at 9 and I stayed until 11.30 until they decided now we're going to do the Quran. And having to deal with music and dancing and singing and mixing and why you allow yourself like people like you 
make the deen of no worth in the eyes of these people. If they are people who need to have honor, it's the people of knowledge. And you talk about it like nothing. And we talk about it like nothing. When the Imam is invited to, to conduct a marriage contract, he needs to put his own condition before the bride or the groom puts their own condition. For the bride, the wife and the husband puts their own condition in the country. It's the Imam who should put his conditions that you want me to come, that is fine. Know this, know that, know this, know that. You find people going to a wedding and praising the family. Yani they bring someone who is respectful, known in the community. He comes and he's yani manfukh, ha, kaddiki or tawusi. He's, you know, like a rooster. And he, they invited me, they want me to. So he goes praising this family. يعني العائلة الكريمة المقدسة المطهرة right? and he goes to praise the other family and this and that huh? and after all this praise the women with men that العري no clothes on almost خمور huh? alcohol is served music dancing cameras video uh, newspapers pictures huh? even pictures in some Islamic magazine uh, they call them magazine yeah, out of 40 pages, 36 pages advertisement, pictures of people without hijab and without, with ari and all that, so and so brother got married to so and so sister. And two seconds before he was praising them, the honorable family of so and so and the honorable, praising them for what? Why you bring the deen so low in the eyes of these people? You want me to come, this is how you do it. You don't do it this way. I'm not coming. Don't you think by doing that you give honor to the deen of Allah? The ulama used to refuse to go to the khulafa in their houses to teach them the deen. Imam Malik, when they send him al Khalifa, send him, come and read al muwatta for my kids. Teach al muwatta to my kids. Khalifa. He said, this is ilm. The ilm you come to. The ilm does not come to you. You come to the ilm. The ilm does not come to you. Hmm? One of the, one of the ulama, Allah, he yani, forgot his name, uh, maybe Nafi, he's sitting and a black man. Huh? Black man, a slave, was a slave. Sitting in the masjid, the khalifa comes with his two kids comes with his two kids and they ask him questions. He does not even turn around. He answers. So when the Khalifa leaves with his kids, he tells them, you see how we insult you ourselves for that. Those people who appreciated now. When the Khalifa of Islam appreciated the ulama, the ummah was very successful. But they appreciated them when the ulama carried the deen the way they're supposed. They fulfilled the amana. But when the ulama became, huh? when the ulama became lu'ab uh, and gold in the hands of the people, not even his, yani the brother saying, Qusur, the ulama on the street, for the people of no worth, they become of no worth. They sell their deen for a few dollars here and there. Forget about Qusur. how many of the ulama reach the Qusur, you know? The ulama and the imma, of course these ulama, yani we're just using the term, but ulama don't reach that level. So honor the deen, the deen of Allah. This is qala Allah, qala Rasulullah. So when people take that, that is what happens. And the next reason for the doors of success to be closed, is they're rushing after the dunya, huh? and the dunya is running away from them. And if you're an honorable person, you don't run after something that is running away from you. I don't like you, and they start running away, and you start running after them. Some, someone tells you, I don't like you, and you keep going after them. A woman tells you, you know what, you're ugly. <laughs> And you still go back to her, marry me. <laughs> what, what honor is that? Where is your honor, man? 
And this is the dunya. This is the dunya. The dunya runs away from you and you keep running after it. That closes the door of success. You find some of us sits for five hours chatting, joking, talking business, talking this, talking that, criticizing this. Someone say, do you remember يعني, the story of Abu Bakr? He said, oh Allah, I'm sleepy now. He's suddenly sleepy and he has to wake up for work tomorrow. Right? How many people do that? Yeah, and he'll stand outside the masjid after salah for three, four hours. And I'm sure, yeah, and maybe there are some brothers outside. They would rather stay outside and, and talk of no worth than to listen or go sleep so they can wake up early. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> that is when you run out of the away from you. No honor. That closes the doors. And the Akhirah. Because every day you live, you're coming closer to the Akhir. And you're turning back your back to it. Every day you passes, huh? you are one day closer to the Akhir. Yet every action that I see from you and you see from me is running away from the Akhir. And it's not. You're not running away. Well, yeah, and whether you like it or not, by force, you're going to it. Even if you think you're running away from it. That is, these are six reasons for the doors of success to be closed in front of Al-Abd. So see where you are. And you see which path you're taking to close the door of success. And know that you close the door of success of your own. And he for his own. And she for her own. Then we have closed the doors of success for the whole ummah. So be responsible and be someone who stands up for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned him to. Kultu, يعني ibn al-Qayyim, wa aslu dalika adam al-raghbati wal-rahba, wa aslu ba'fu al-yaqeen, wa aslu ba'fu al-basira, wa aslu mahanat al-nafs wa danahatiha wa istibdalha billahi wa khayr, wa illa فلو ماتت النفس شريفة كبيرة لم ترضى بالدون فأصل الخير كله بتوفيق الله ومشيئته وشرف النفس وكبرها ونبلها وأصل الشر خستها ودناءتها وصغرها قال تعالى قد أفلح من زكاها قد خاب من دساها أي أفلح من كبرها وكثرها ونماها بطاعة الله وخاب من صغرها وحقرها بمعاصي الله فالنفوس الشريفة لا ترضى من الأشياء إلا بعلاها وأفضلها وأحمدها عاقبة والنفوس الدنيا تحوم حول الدناءات وتقع عليها كما يقع الذباب على الأقدار النفس الشريفة العلية لا ترضى بالظلم ولا بالفواحش ولا بالسرقة والخيانة لأنها أكبر من ذلك وجل يعني he keeps going to say that the very high moral and high attitude and art is the lowest of the refuses the garbage and the dunya is garbage and business is garbage and running after people's pleasure is garbage and pride yourself of no of things of no worth is garbage so the man with honor refuses to do that refuses to do that so that is what we need to Jazakumullah khair, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.